In this lesson, we're going to take a look at working with tables. In our last section, we worked with memory variables. However, once you quit Visual Fox Pro, the contents of your memory variables are, are deleted. They're all gone. And so, if I were to go ahead and display memory, you'd see nothing display in my Visual Fox Pro desktop because all the memory variables that we created in our last section, our session, were uh, deleted. So what I want to do first off is to set the default working directory for Visual Fox Pro so that I can know where my, my table file will be created. When Visual Fox Pro creates tables, they are individual operating systems files that are placed somewhere on your hard drive. So I'm going to switch over to Explorer right now and um, I should show you. So I've got a folder called Tutorial uh, Lesson 1, and I'm just going to set Visual Fox Pro to work in this folder so when I create my table, it will be stored here, and we can come back and view it later on. To set the default working folder, we use the set directory or set default command. So set default to, and uh, I could navigate to it if I use the question sign. Um, a question sign after most of the commands that require a path or a file name will uh, pop up a dialog to allow you to specify the path using the GUI as opposed to typing it by hand. I'm going to go ahead and type it seeing that I know what it is. And then I press enter key. To create a table, we use the create command, create, and we specify the name of the table. If I don't specify a name and simply press the enter key, then Visual Fox Pro will bring up the create table dialog, which defaults to table 1. Notice that I'm in the lesson 1 folder. I'm going to call this one uh, free table, or my table 1 and save, after which we'll see the table designer come up. And I like the new table designer in Visual Fox Pro um, 8 and up. Um, uh, a lot more room to work with. So if you're working in Visual Fox Pro 6 or lower, uh, you'll find that you don't have as much room. It's a little bit more cramped, but the functionality is just the same. So what we're going to do is to store the same bit of information as we did in our last lesson. I had I had the age. Um, so first of all, let me go with name, and I'll make name 30 characters. So here again, we're seeing data types. So the name of my first field or my first column, the first bit of information that I want to capture, is called uh, name and I make it a character type and I specify the width. So this is saying to Visual Fox Pro that when you create the table don't store more than or the maximum number of characters that you can store is up to 30. Next I'll store an address. I want to make this pretty simple so we'll make that uh, 40. We could put a city in there but I want to keep this simple um, and so we'll leave that out. Uh, date of birth we're going to make a date type. I simply type D to get the date type. Of course, I could drop this down so we could see all the other types, which I did not look at. We looked at the fundamental types the last time, so I could simply select date here. And Visual Fox Pro defaults this to eight, um, to width of eight, width of eight, and we can't change that. So date is handled internally by Visual Fox Pro, and that's okay. Um, we have. Um, likes, coffee. Okay, so uh, I'm limited to a maximum of 10 characters for my field names when I create a table that's not, not associated with a database. So, likes, coffee is missing an E, but that's okay. 
So, and this will make a logical type. So I'll just drop this down and look for logical here. And this defaults to one character, sorry, one width of one. And um, in the last example, we we had an age, which you know symbolized a numeric data type. I'm only going to put it here um, for show, but we don't really need the age because I've got the date of birth. And given that we can do computations on a date type, I could always calculate the age. But uh, I'm going to put it in here just to show you um, how I could calculate the age. I'll let Visual Foxcore actually populate this, this column for us. So I'll make it numeric, and I'll make it uh, two digits. And so we'll go ahead and we'll click OK down here. There's some other items here which we'll, we'll use when we're working with a database. Right now, our table does not belong to a database, and Visual Fox Pro considers this to be a free table. So we click OK here, and our table is now created. So if we look in the status bar, we'll see the name of our table, which is My Table 1. We see the path, C tutorial lesson one, my table one. And notice that the default extension for a, a Visual Fox Pro table is .dbf, um, which is short for database file. The status bar also tells me that I have no records currently in my table and that my table is being used exclusively right now, which is expected given that I just created it. So to add data to the table, uh, we simply use the append command, and I press enter key. Now a table is merely or simply a collection of related data items. Okay. So in our last example, we had the guy by the name of James Cameron. His address was 199 Davidson Road. His date of birth was, um, and the format here is month, day, year. So it was uh, 07. Notice that Visual Fox Pro automatically formats the date for me. I type 07 and it jumps. The slashes are in there automatically. Uh, 18, and it jumps, and if I type 64, it will assume 1964, or I could type 1964 as well. So I tab out of that. If I go back up here, you see the full, the full um, century. Okay, likes coffee. It's a true or false, yes or no type. So I'll say, I'll just type Y, right? And Visual Fox Pro puts true in there. And age, I'm going to leave blank. Next, we'll create uh, we'll create about two more records, and then uh, uh, proceed. So I'm just going to um, speed this up a bit. So just hang tight. Okay. So I entered more than three records, uh, given that I was going uh, a super speed there. Um, so I've actually entered uh, five records, and so to save the table, I simply close um, the window to come out of append mode. And so to view the data in the table now, I can use the list command. I can type list, and Visual Fox Pro will display everything. Now, I guess most of it scrolled off the screen. So let's try that. Um, let's use the browse command for now. So we'll go browse. So we have our table here, and um, within our table we have five rows or five uh, records. And as I said before, a table is a collection of related data items. Name, address, date of birth, likes, coffee, and age are all related to all the persons, are all related information or bits of information for every person that's here. So at a glance, I can tell you that James Cameron likes coffee by looking over at the likes coffee column. I can tell you his date of birth. Likewise for George Maxfield. I can tell you that he was born um, uh, December 25th, 1971. So 
table and the data in tables are relational. Okay, so next thing we want to do is to populate the age field with the actual age of all uh, our friends here. And given that we have their date of birth, we can have FoxPro do that calculation quite easily for us. So we're going to use the new command called replace. And we use the replace command to uh, update the um, columns in a table. Columns or field, I tend to use them interchangeably, so a column or a field, same thing. So name, address, date of birth, date of birth, and all these others are fields or columns. Okay? So I type replace, and I'm getting some IntelliSense help here, and I'll say place the age field with, and I could say, I could type a value, 34, and I'm going to scope this and say replace all records. Okay. Um, let's look at what would happen if um, and I'm getting carried away here, but it's okay. Uh, replace age 34 only affects one record. But if I wanted all records to be affected, I simply say all, and now everybody is set to 34. But that's not true because they're not all. They're all born at different times. So what we need to do is to have Visual Fox Pro calculate the age of each person based on their date of birth. So to do that, it's quite simple. I'll just go back up here and I'll take um, current date. The date function returns the current date minus um, their date of birth. So I'm making reference now to this column. And so what it will do as it goes through each row, it will take the value stored on the date of birth column and subtract that from the current date. And then um, if I were to do that, <coughs> date minus date of birth is going to give me a large number. Let me, um, let me just pause here to show you. Um, OK, never mind. I'll explain it later. Let's just uh, proceed. So what we need to do is to actually divide all of this by 365. Because when I do the subtraction, what I will get is the number of days that have elapsed um, um, since the date of birth to the current um, date, which is a very large number, which would not store in here. And so we would need to divide by the number of days in a year to actually get the individual's age. And so I'll scope this as all. So let's read this. It's replace the age column with this calculation and do so for all records. Okay. And um, that was pretty easy. So Cameron is 42, uh, Andy is 33, Mary and, and Clive are both. Actually, they're all different ages. Uh, Mary's 36, George is 35, and Clive is 38. And I only included the, the age column so I could show you this, because given that we have the date of birth, we can always use this calculation to determine the age. And so as a wise design um, strategy, it would not be prudent of us to actually store the age because it can be calculated. So to save space on your disk, we could leave out the H column. OK, moving on, we will close the browse window. And what we want to do now is to switch over to Explorer. Let's bring this up. And uh, in our Tutorial Lesson 1 folder, we'll see that there is a physical file created um, in this folder, um, which is our table. Name my table one dot dbf and it's less than a kilobyte even with all the data. I'm so guessing that Visual Fox Pro has not yet flushed data to the table. It's probably being buffered. So let's go back to Visual Fox Pro and I'm going to close the table. So the table is open. I'm on record 4 or 5 and I'm just going to go ahead and close the table using the use command. And so our table is now closed. Let us switch back to Explorer here. I'll go Details. Okay.
so uh, we're still on the 1k and that's pretty good so to open a table and just to wrap up here we use the use command again and I simply specify the name of the table or I could go question sign as usual and get the use dialog specify the name of my table and I can specify whether to open the table read only or exclusively but I'll get back to that in a later session so we go ahead and open again and notice now that the status bar is showing the name of my table and of course we can use the browse command to view the data in the table so that's it for creating tables